Hi there, this is JD Ferris Row, and this is your first flip video. I hope your weekend has gone well, and I hope you've had a had a good first few days of school to get started, and have gotten to relax a little bit over this weekend. Uh, sorry for this video being late. I know that I had hoped to have this up Friday evening, but decided after working way too late on Friday and taking my girls to the state fair on Saturday, here have some photos that uh, I wasn't going to get this done until Sunday. So it's Sunday afternoon, I've been to church, I've had some lunch, and now should be able to get this done in uh, hopefully under 15 minutes. That's going to be our goal for today. In fact, we're not going to go through the blogging piece today like I thought we were. We're just going to cover how to create a Google site. And so the goal for today's flip video is going to be to give you guys the step-by-step -step instructions, introductions on how to create a Google site. So you will have your own website, and this website will be what we use in class for to collect your assignments, to see your reflections, um, really to kind of serve as your portfolio for our class and for me to have something to look at when I grade you. Um, I, so let's get started now. Um, timer is set. And I want to introduce you to a little bit of the flip video environment first, since this is our first time on video. Uh, all of these videos are going to be available on YouTube. You should be able to watch them on any device. Since most people in this class are using a laptop, I want to talk to you a little bit about note taking. The idea behind the flip video is going to be that you can watch this as many times as you want. If you need to rewind it, if you're the type of person who learns because you hear things repeated over and over again, feel free to go back to these videos. I'm never taking them offline. Um, you can watch them and go back to them as much as you like. You can even stop, rewind, and restart me again in order to see what I'm doing or what button I clicked, and, and feel free to do that. In fact, feel free to do that in class. You should bring a set of headphones with you so that you can plug in and you can review things in class that we're working working on, um, that is absolutely acceptable. One of the other things I wanted to share with you was that it's a good idea for you to be able to uh, take notes um, electronically so that you can refer back to them. Some people learn better, in fact most people learn better when they hear something and then type it out in some way or write it out in some way. So for those of you who are on a tablet or are watching this on a phone, you may want to scratch some things down on paper. Don't worry, you can take a photo of it later so you don't lose it. For those of you who are on a computer, um, I highly recommend using the split screen. So don't feel bad if you, or you know, certainly take advantage of the fact that you can look at a video on this screen and you can set your notes on this screen. This is the Evernote application. If you haven't used this before, it's evernote.com. And Evernote.com gives you the ability to create notes, give them titles, sort them through categories so you can have a folder for every class, and then type your notes and know that you can go back and search through all of your notes for very specific keywords that you use. So if we were to write something like, I don't know, possum, and then go up to our notes up here, and search for possum, we'll see that I made an untitled note on 1212 that had the word possum in it, and it'll go find it for me. So Evernote's one of those really useful ones. Another one that's gaining in popularity is called Scratchpad. Scratchpad actually ties right in with your Google Apps, your, your Google Drive, so that you can type messages in Scratchpad. Hello class, this is our first flip video and that it saves those on the scratch pad. When you go back to your Google Drive, you'll see that you have the notes that you took on over here saved on your Google Drive. And again, you can keyword search and you can look those up. So it's just, those are just a few hints for you to um, get you comfortable starting to take electronic notes. We're going to talk more about note taking later on, but I just wanted to throw that out there as we begin looking at how to make your Google site that you should be taking notes. It is one of those things that's expected of you. Even if I don't go and collect your notes, um, it will be useful for you later on. But for today, we're going to shut those down and we are going to concentrate on your Google Drive. So the first thing you're going to want to do is sign into your AMDG account. Now I had a couple of you ask me, and it is absolutely true, that if you already have a Gmail account, the AMDG account can be a little overwhelming because now you're being asked to carry 
two accounts. Well, it's not always a bad idea to have one account that you can kind of be your student persona on the web. So your AMDG account is a great place to correspond with colleges or to work on scholarships or to be that default email address for all of your academic work. And then that account with its associated YouTube account and sites account and everything else is separate from your social life account, is separate from the, the videos that you like on YouTube that you may or may not want other adults to see or you may not want coming back to haunt you when you're applying for colleges. So it's not always a bad idea to have an AMDG account. We've made it simple for you to understand when you're on your AMDG account. First of all, you're logged in up here, JD Ferris at amdg.rebuff.org. And second, over on the other side of the screen, you'll see this symbol. This symbol is your indication that you're on your AMDG account. So once you've logged into your AMDG account, I want you to look across the top here, and you'll notice that we have this search bar. And the, the search bar, the Google search bar, is there to, to take you to all things Google. This would include the drive, which is what I'm on right now. This would include your Gmail address, which is where I'll be communicating most of the time with you when I send you messages. And then this would include all the things like your calendar so that you can keep track of appointments that you might have, or even your classes if that's where you want to keep track of your classes. Your contact list, which could include all of the contacts in our directory, which is really every student and every teacher, so it's always easy to get a hold of your teachers. So the AMDG environment gives you a lot of information and a lot of useful things. The one we're going to concentrate on today is sites. So when you click on the black bar and you click on sites, you're gonna, I'm gonna, you're gonna see, you're gonna have access to every Google site that either has been shared with you or that you have created. So hopefully you're seeing a pretty blank page right now. Um, if you're not, then somebody has shared something with you or you're way ahead of me because you've already started creating a site. I'm gonna walk through this as if you've never created a website before from a form. And so for some of you, this may be a little bit of review. For others of you, this will be brand new. What I want you to start by doing is just click on this create button. The create button is Google's indication that you're interested in creating a site. And they're going to walk you through a couple of steps. The first thing they're going to ask you to do is select a template. Now you have two options. The blank template is literally a blank slate. So if you have zero web page experience at all, you might want to pick a, a gallery template. A gallery template is going to do some of the basic setups including picking a color scheme, giving you some backgrounds, and giving you some layout. And I highly recommend the gallery for new users because it gives you just that polished look without necessarily making you go through all the work of creating your own site. So when we click on browse the gallery, it's going to go through Google's gallery and start to pull up some different types of sites. So you see the number one chosen site is the is the basic classroom site. You also have the professional site or a wiki site. And when you click on these, you can see that you can see that you have a button here that asks you to preview. So when you click on the preview template, it's going to load this up. Now understand that everything in this page you can change. So you can change the photos, you can change the information that comes down here, including recent announcements or in the news. You can change and in fact will change all of the things down the side. So you can make your site really a part of you. And that's what I want to encourage you to do. This site should be able to express your creativity and things that you are interested in sharing. If you find a template that you really like, you just go to the upper right hand corner and click use template. If this isn't the template for you, go ahead and X out of that tab and you're back to this basic select a site template and you can go back to the gallery and you can find, wait until you find the template that kind of like speaks to you not necessarily because you like the pictures on it but because you're interested in what it has to say or the way that it's laid out or what it looks like I've never seen this one before this is the Bible study template and since I've never seen it before I think I'm going to play around with this one so I'm going to hit preview template and what we see here, the main thing about it is this nice kind of book layout. Up here we have a home, our members, prayer requests, types of things that you would see kind of in a Bible study group. And then we have a calendar, requests, um, archives. Yeah, I think I could, I think I can work with this. Even though I'm not in a Bible study group, I think I can work with this kind of as our demo for today. So I'm going to click on use template. 
Now we see that selected template to use the Bible study template has been chosen and we get the opportunity to name our site. And so since this is our test, I think I'm going to call this digital citizenship site. And then down here at the bottom under site location, you'll see it says https sites.google.com slash a slash amdg.brabuff.org digital citizenship site. That's a little bit of a mouthful for me, so we're going to shorten that to dig sit three since we're in third period. So now I've got a name for my site. I've got a title of where I'm going to be able to find this site on the internet. And I have selected a theme. So now I'm going to click create. This location is already in use by another site. Please pick a new location. Oh, it's giving me that error because I'd already created a digsit3 class earlier. So we'll just call it digsit. It's creating your site now. And we see that up here I still have my AMDG logo. It's still going to indicate where we're at. And it's going to give me lots of information here. And this is this is now where we can start changing things. While I like the advertisement for the Nexus 7, I don't really want that on my site. While I love this beautiful picture of a mountain, I have never been mountain climbing in my life. So I need to kind of make this site my own. Let me walk you through the, the layout of what you're going to see on this site. Up in the upper left hand corner, this is the name of your page. Now you can change the name of your page in the same way you can change just about everything. So I'm okay with this being called the home page. I'm going to leave that how it is. I want you to pay attention to the to the buttons over here. The first button I want you to notice is this edit page button. This is the button that you're going to press to edit any page on your site. This is where you'll change names, swap in photos, put in um, substantive information instead of the gibberish that they put up there. The next button to it is the new page button. This is the way to add a page to anywhere on your site, whether it's going to be a sub page um, describing a specific project that we do or a reflection that you do, or, uh, or a new main page where you're going to put, you know, specific information about a project or, or something that I indicate later on in the week. We're going to be building this page over the next couple of weeks. The third button is the More button, and as you can see, the More button gives you a lot of information, including revisions, so you can track all of the changes that you've made, or manage your site as a whole. And we're not going to play around with managing your site today, but we will be doing that later on in the week. And then your fourth button is your Share button. The Share button is the button that you use to designate whether you want the entire world to be able to see this page, just a few people, or just you and me. And I'm going to give you the ability to choose most of that, although sometimes I will want your um, people in your groups or in your class to be able to see your page. So let's begin with editing this page. So we're going to click on the Edit Page button. And when we click on the Edit Page button, we see that um, we have a number of different gadgets that they have used. The gadget in a Google website page is a special piece of code or a special piece of programming that's going to refer to something else, maybe, in a, maybe a calendar or it may be any of the number of things that are listed here under insert. This could include slideshows of pictures or a presentation that you created or even a spreadsheet or a form that you want people to fill out to give you information. All of these things we're going to play around with a little bit but for now, we don't need to concentrate on these other than to know that the gadgets can be inserted and can be removed. So by clicking that X, I've now removed that gadget. Now I've got a lot of blank space here, and I'm not really sure what I want to do with it. So I think I'm going to insert a picture. We click on Insert Image. Now a lot of you have inserted pictures and documents before, and you choose the file, and it brings up a dialog box. And you choose out of your dialog box the picture that you want. Code monkey, get up, get coffee. Code monkey, go to job. Code monkey, have boring meeting with boring manager Rob. Rob say, Code monkey, very diligent, but his output stink. His code not functional or elegant. What do code monkey think?
code monkey think maybe manage Okay, so I hope you don't mind me fast forwarding a little bit as we approach our 15 minute mark. I want to give you a chance to see that through all of our changes, you notice this is no longer a Bible study group page, but now looks more and more like our class page, including 26 days until the end of first quarter, a link to my blog, and some more information that would be more pertinent to our class. So to review, you've gotten the basics of setting up a site, how to select a template, how to use that template to begin changing things, to begin editing things, to be more representative of your personality and less whatever the template says. So what we're going to do on Tuesday is begin to choose your template and put your site together to look like the way you want it to and to express your personality. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed your first flip video and I will see you on Tuesday.